before we get into this video, NQ Stats does not provide strategy. It does not provide indicators and it does not provide investment or financial advice. What NQ Stats does do is provide statistical edge derived from historical market performance. Nothing shown in this video should be taken as advice of any kind. This video is providing a tool that could potentially be leveraged to make a trade decision. You as the trader are responsible for how you leverage and build around it, in addition to how you enter, exit, and manage any trade you decide to make. With that said, let's get into it. All right, how's it going? This video is going to be on the IB breaks stats. So I recently done a video on uh, noon curve and ALN sessions. And so this is the third continue, uh, you know, trend continuation stat, and that's IB breaks. Uh, so this one is going to be specifically on that video and not covering anything else. So IB breaks, if you're not familiar with it, go to nqstats.com, learn more about it. But essentially, you're going to have the IB form, the initial balance, between the windows of 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. Eastern. So the high and low that is set within that time range establishes your IB high and low. Now, once that range closes at 10.30, uh, you have that box that is formed. Now, when price is internal to that box, it will break 80, th at least with the 10-year the uh, sample that I did. So I did a 10-year data sample from 2014 to 2024, accounting uh, for every session. And 83% of the time, IB is going to break before 12 p.m. So before we get here, that vertical line, IB will break 83% of the time. If it doesn't break by that time, then the probability increases uh, as we move over to um, New York close at 4 p.m. Eastern. That increases to 96%. So, you know, IB closes up here and then we chop around. The stat says we're going to break the IB low or high 83% uh, of the time before noon but if we continue to chop inside it's saying that we're going to break 96 percent of the time before 4 p.m so there's a high probability that it's going to break regardless right it's either going to be uh 83 before noon or 96 percent chance before 4 p.m with that said that's not directionally biased it's just the higher the low is going to break so how do we get a bias well you can use uh, and, and I've talked about this in other uh, videos, is is real-time price action is is what matters most, right? These are historical stats. These are XYZ happened in the past, and then ABC happened as a result. Uh, so it should not be confused with, you know, this is, this is what you're only looking for uh, and nothing else. The price doesn't matter, right? Don't Don't get into that mindset. Uh, the stat is the stat, yes, but price con price context matters. So you're using real-time price to anticipate if the statistical bias uh, is is worth taking, and it aligns with what's currently happening in real time. And it also provides a a uh, you know statistical target for you to take your trade to. Um, so how do you determine a bias? Well, you know from the 9:30 open, we're just downtrending. Right, stair stepping down, all these little pullbacks before continuation. So we get down here, we give a pullback. Where are we pulling back to? We had this entire down leg, and every time we get a little pullback, stair stepping down, and then we get to this point. So from there, if I'm looking for continuation down, what do I want to see? I want to see pullback or continuation down. I want to see pullback into this 40 to 60% pullback range is where I want to see price go for continuation. Now I've marked out this gap here, uh, this, this price gap of interest, because if we're going to trend up into this 40 to 60% range, the peak of that is right at the start of that gap. So I've marked out this gap where I do not want to see this gap close above. If, if, if these candles close above that gap, it could mean that we're going for this high over here, this high, or maybe we're going higher. Um, and it's just not an area that I want to see be mitigated or or uh, negated. So what I want to see is price come up into that 40, 60% range uh, at, a, at a minimum and not break this gap and then start to continue down for that, you know, down, stair stepping motion, pull back down, just mechanical price movement. 
uh, the where this would change or the bias would change. All right, so we have this low that's put in um, right here, and then your high. Now where the bias would change, here's your 50% pullback of, of that move. So price comes up, price comes down, low goes in, high goes in. That's your 40 to 60% continuation down. So this low is now broken. So this high is now now negated or no longer relevant. Now this is the most recent price leg high. Uh, and as we push down, we break the low, this low right here. So now this low is, is no longer of importance in terms of price leg. We're looking for a new low to form. A new low does form down here at the bottom. And price starts to pivot back up. Now the these are one of two things is going to happen with, with this low and this high. Either we're going to retrace up 40 to 60 percent and pivot down for continuation to a new low uh, trend continuation, or we're going to pivot up and break this high. And now we, we've broken structure and we're starting to look for a uh, possible trend change to where if we come back 40 to 60 percent, you know, pivot up 40 to 60 percent pivot up something along those lines. So I'm not looking for this high to be broken, but I'm anticipating that if this gap gets closed through that we're going to break that high. So that is that is my overall bias here. So when I'm going into this IB trade with the low expectation, I have a context behind it. Now, if you put stats into the picture, uh, when IB closes in the upper half, so we close in the lower half today, but let's say the IB range, you know, close somewhere up here. Uh, when it closes in the upper half, the high of the IB was broken 81% of the time. So we know IB is going to break 83% of the time before 12 p.m., before noon. But when it closes in the upper half, it breaks the high about 81% of the time. Now, when it closes in the lower half, it breaks the low 74% of the time. So we have that confluence the directional bias confluence in line with the price action confluence. So stair stepping, you know, your 50% pullbacks, pullback, gap doesn't break, continuation. And so as we start to continue down, we now have the directional stat bias telling us, okay, we're, we've closed in the lower half. There's 74% probability that we're going to break the low. Um, and also there is an 83% probability that the IB is going to break before 12 PM. So we know the IB is going to break high chance. It's going to be the low price action. Real time is also downtrending and you start to look for your entry criteria and, and triggers. Uh, so here is my trade uh, executions on there. So I, I did take an earlier trade, but this specific to IB, this is my trade here. So coming up out of that box getting down through that uh, continuation down move and just taking it right down to IB low. Um, so in terms of risk, risking the swing high that I entered on because I, again, I don't want to see price break above this and start closing above the gap. And you know, now my entire idea becomes mitigated. So if I'm using that swing high as my stop down to entry, this is roughly a three and a half ish R on this IB trade. Um, and that's it. That is the, the IB trade that is putting it all together, that's adding in real-time mechanical price movement with stats. The two are aligning to form the same directional bias. So you have historical context as well as real-time context, and both are painting the same picture. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Take care.